The H2 transfer vehicle (HTV), also called Kaunotori, 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 Oriental Stork, or White Stork is an automated cargo spacecraft used to resupply the Kibo Japanese Experiment Module and the International Space Station The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency has been working on the design since the early 1990s. The first mission, HTV-1, was originally intended to be launched in 2001. It launched at 17:01 coordinated universal time on the 10th of September 2009 on an HIIB launch vehicle. The name Kaunotori was chosen for the HTV by JAXA because a white stork carries an image of conveying an important thing, a baby, happiness, and other joyful things. Therefore, it precisely expresses the HTV's mission to transport essential materials to the ISS. Topic. Design The HTV is about 9.8 meters 32 feet long including maneuvering thrusters at one end and 4.4 meters 14 feet in diameter. Total mass when empty is 10.5 tons 11.6 short tons, with a maximum total payload of 6,000 kilograms 13,000 pounds, 6.0 t, 6.6 short tons, for a maximum launch weight of 16.5 tons 18.2 short tons. The HTV is comparable in function to the Russian Progress, European ATV, Commercial Dragon, and Commercial Cygnus spacecraft, all of which bring supplies to the ISS. Like the ATV, the HTV carries more than twice the payload of the Progress, but is launched less than half as often. Unlike Progress capsules and ATVs, which use the docking ports automatically, HTVs and American commercial spacecraft approach the ISS in stages, and once they reach their closest parking orbit to the ISS, crew grapple them using the robotic arm Canadarm2 and berth them to an open berthing port on the Harmony module. The HTV has an external payload bay which is accessed by robotic arm after it has been berthed to the ISS. New payloads can be moved directly from the HTV to Kibo's exposed facility. Internally, it has eight International Standard Payload Racks in total which can be unloaded by the crew in a shirt-sleeve environment. After the retirement of NASA's Space Shuttle in 2011, HTVs became the only spacecraft capable of transporting ISPRs to the ISS. The SpaceX Dragon and Orbital Sciences Cygnus can carry resupply cargo bags but not ISPRs. The intention of HTV's modularized design was to use different module configuration to match the mission requirement. However, to reduce the development cost it was decided to fly the mixed PLC, ULC configuration only, to control the HTV's attitude and to perform the orbital maneuvers such as rendezvous and re-entry. The craft has four 500N-class main thrusters and 28 110N-class attitude control thrusters. Both use bipropellant, namely monomethylhydrazine MMH, as fuel and mixed oxides of nitrogen MON3, as oxidizer. HTV-1, minus 2, and minus 4 use Aerojet's 110NR1E, Space Shuttle's Vernier engine, and the 500N based on the Apollo spacecraft's R4D. Later HTVs use 500N class HBT-5 thrusters and 120N class HBT-1 thrusters made by Japanese manufacturer IHI Aerospace Co., Ltd. The HTV carries about 2,400 kg of propellant in four tanks. After the unloading process is completed, the HTV will be loaded with waste and unberthed. The vehicle will then deorbit and be destroyed during re-entry, the debris falling into the Pacific Ocean. Flights Initially seven missions were planned in 2008-2015. With the extension of ISS project after 2015 through 2020, three more missions are planned, possibly replacing the tenth flight with an improved, cost-reduced version HTVX. The first vehicle was launched on an HIIB rocket, a more powerful version of the earlier HIIA, at 17.01 Greenwich Mean Time on 10 September 2009, from Launch Pad 2 of the Yoshinobu Launch Complex at the Tanegashima Space Center. As of March 2015, five subsequent missions are planned one each year for 2015 2019. One fewer total mission than had been planned in August 2013 at the time the fourth HTV mission was underway. 
planned successor. Topic: HTVX. In May 2015, Japan's Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology announced a proposal to replace HTV with an improved, cost-reduced version preliminary called HTVX. Proposed concept of HTVX as of July 2015 is to reuse the design of HTV's pressurized logistics carrier PLC as much as possible, except adding a side hatch for late access cargo. To replace the unpressurized logistics carrier, avionics module, and propulsion module with a new service module. Instead of loading the unpressurized cargo inside the spacecraft, load them on top of the service module. Reusing the PLC design will allow minimizing the development cost and risk. Concentrating the reaction control system RCS and the solar panels to service module will allow simplifying the wiring and piping, to reduce the weight and the manufacturing cost. Loading the unpressurized cargo outside the spacecraft allows larger cargo, only limited by the launch vehicle fairing. The aim is to cut the cost in half, while keeping or extending the capability of existing HTV. The simplification of overall structure will allow the launch mass of HTVX to be dropped to 15.5 t planned from HTV's 16.5 t, while the maximum weight of cargo will be increased to 7.2 t net weight 5.85 t excluding support structure weight from HTV's 6.0 t net 4.0 t. In December 2015, the plan to develop HTVX was approved by the Strategic Headquarters for Space Policy of the Cabinet Office, targeting fiscal year 2021 for the flight of HTVX-1 technical demonstration vehicle to be launched by H-3 rocket, with the agreement of Japan-US Open Platform Partnership Program in December 2015 to extend the cooperation of ISS operation through 2024. Japan will provide its share of ISS operation costs with the form of transportation by HTVX, and also a possibility to develop a small return capsule. The final form of the HTVX consists of three modules: a lower 3.5 meters long pressurized logistics module nearly identical to that of the HTV elongated by 0.2 meters and with a side access hatch added to allow late loading while mated to the rocket, a 2.7 meters long central service module containing all functions and capable of operating independently of the other modules, two arrays of solar panels generate 1 kilowatt of electric electrical power as opposed to the 200W generated by the HTV. In addition the service module batteries are capable of providing a peak output of 3 kW compared to the 2 kW of the original and a 1 megabit per second communication link has been added in addition to the original 8 kilobits per second link. The main thrusters have been removed and the HTVX is purely reliant on reaction control system RCS motors mounted in a ring around the service module and selected service module components have been mounted externally on the top of the service module sitting beneath an attached unpressurized cargo module to allow for ease of maintenance access in space. Finally the third module by default is a 3.8 meters long unpressurized cargo module, essentially a hollow cylinder with shelves it vastly expands the volume of unpressurized cargo which can be stored compared to the storage compartments built into the outside of the original HTV and it can be optionally replaced with a different mission payload. The HTVX has a length of 6.2 meters or 10 meters with the unpressurized cargo module fitted. The payload fairing adapter and payload dispenser have been widened from 1.7 meters to 4.4 meters to accommodate replacing of pressurized module with alternate modules, add increased structural strength, and to accommodate the side hatch. Other payloads being considered to replace the unpressurized cargo module while carrying out ISS resupply missions are an external sensor package, a technology trial of an IDSS airlock with automated station docking as used by the Progress and ATV craft, a trial of rendezvous and docking with a simulated satellite module, a smaller satellite piggybacking the launch to reach ISS orbit, a station return capsule, assembling a beyond-Earth orbit mission such as lunar lander from smaller modules and acting as a space tug shuttling orbiting unpressurized cargo modules to the ISS allowing stuff such as recyclable materials, excess propellant and spare parts to be stored in orbit for future use rather than discarded. Topic. Former evolutionary proposals Topic. HTVR As of 2010, JAXA was planning to add a return capsule option. 
In this concept, HTV's pressurized cargo would be replaced by a re-entry module capable of returning 1.6 tons, 1.8 tons cargo from ISS to Earth. Further, conceptual plans in 2012 included a follow-on spacecraft design by 2022, which would accommodate a crew of three and carry up to 400 kilograms, 880 pounds of cargo. Topic: Lagrange outpost resupply. As of 2014, both JAXA and Mitsubishi conducted studies of a next-generation HTV as a possible Japanese contribution to the proposed international manned outpost at Earth-Moon L2. This variant of HTV was to be launched by HX Heavy and can carry 1.8 tons of supplies to EML-2. Modifications from the current HTV includes the addition of solar electric paddles and extension of the propellant tank. Topic. Manned variant A proposal announced in June 2008 suggested combining HTV's propulsion module with a manned capsule for four people. Topic. Japanese space station A Japanese space station has been proposed to be built up from HTV modules. This method is similar to how the modules in Mir, as well as many modules of the Russian orbital segment of the ISS are based on the TKS cargo vehicle design. Gallery See also Comparison of space station cargo vehicles Comparison of automated cargo spacecraft Topic. References Topic. External links Project Overview of H-2 Transfer Vehicle, JAXA HTV, HIIB Launch Special Site, JAXA For Future Space Transportation Mission HTV, HIIB Promotional Movie on YouTube. JAXA H-2 Transfer Vehicle Road to the HTV's Launch, JAXA HTV-1, HIIBTF Quick Review on YouTube. JAXA H-2B Rocket and Kaunotori 3D Model, Asahi Shinbun Japan Space Freighter in Orbit, BBC News